and lay it flat on something here and then I'll, that side that I just worked on, this is the side I filed right here, or that I uh, shaved, I'll just kind of flatten that out a little bit just to knock any little high spots off. In the old days, of course, they didn't have sandpaper and they would have just used a scraper on this. Uh, and I don't use the sandpaper on the instruments when I'm building instruments too much. I very rarely use sandpaper. I don't use sandpaper until I get down to the finishes. But uh, on the wood, I just use a scraper. And I could do that here, but that's really kind of awkward on a, on a piece of uh, cross grain maple like this. It'd be kind of an awkward way to scrape it. I could do it and it would just take longer. This is much faster and for what we're working with here and everything this is the perfect way to do it. You know, brush off the little extra dust there. Some people would say well that's going to fill the pores in and it's not going to vibrate very well but for what little bit we're worried about there in the tight grain on this maple it's not going to fill very many pores and it'll vibrate out as fast as it filled it so we're not too worried about that. Now I'm just going to take a little flat file and just knock the sharp edge off of, the, off of this just, just very lightly hardly any at all mostly just to get rid of the burrs of the, old, of the wood so just hardly any at all and just makes it nice now the bridge feet were already cut pretty good on this they already were matched pretty well to the top um, as a matter of fact they match really well to the top so I'm not going to worry about cutting the feet on this one to try to make them perfect so it looks pretty good to me so now I'm not worried about the sound post yet although I'll get there Right now, I'm just going to measure for intonation. And I use, for my full size violins, I use 325 millimeters as my intonation point. So, I, then what that's measured from is from the front edge of this E string, I mean, right where it leaves the nut, it's basically the length of the E string, is really the easiest way to say it, to where it just touches the front side of the bridge and I want that to be 325 millimeters and that's exactly where I'm at. Now I'm going to move these strings just by eye on the bridge here and set them where I think they need to go and then I'll uh, verify that and I'm setting them out. Now we're talking only before we had a quarter of an inch now we got a less than 3 16 on each side just barely less and uh, this E string is down a little bit lower now to the, so it's going to be easier to note the A string the D string's a hair lower not much the G string's a hair lower not much and that looks pretty good now I'm just going to just see how many millimeters each string is apart here just to kind of as a gauge looks like I've got about uh, 12 millimeters on that one let me just see here it's like 12 and a half about 12 and a half. So on this first one here, I'll just barely touch it and move it just a hair wider. Pretty good eye there, you know, after doing this for 30 years, you get pretty close. Okay, so now I'm just going to take a pencil and just mark it very lightly on both sides of, of the strings, just very lightly, just so I can see where the string was hitting it there. Just enough to see it. Then I'll take the bridge back out once more. And I've got a tri-cornered file that I use for this. And now keep in mind the bridge sits on the instrument like this. So I'm going to, I'm exaggerating the angle, but I'm going to file a very light notch right here at this angle, right here at this angle, right here at that, but not that much of an angle. Just enough though where the string leaves and touches the last place on this bridge will be the, uh, it, it needs to touch what I'm trying to say is the string needs to stop right here on this front edge of the uh, of the uh, bridge and you don't want it you wouldn't want it angled like this because then it would be stopped on the back side so that's why I'm using a slight angle on this and just a light notch it doesn't need to be very much just enough to hold it in place where it doesn't move around the string will be higher than the uh, than the bridge. It'll sit up above the bridge. 
The G might have to be just a teeny bit deeper because it's a bigger string. Okay, so let's see how that fits. Again, I'm still using the old string, so I'm not too worried about anything. I can pop it in and out without having to worry about damaging the new strings. Just use the old ones until you're ready to go. Check my uh, length again. A little bit long. 325 millimeters again. Just almost there. Getting close. If you don't deal in millimeters, then I'll tell you what it is in inches here too, just in a second. I used to know that. I used to do it by inches, but I've been doing it in millimeters for quite a long time because that's kind of the standard. In inches, it is about 12 and 13 sixteenths. 12 and 13 sixteenths to the front there. On the, that's the length of your E-string to where it stops. Now I can look in there and I want to make sure that I've got the bridge setting up really straight up and down. Now the, the top of the bridge is where I want it so I'm going to move the feet to get it more straight up and down. It's still a little bit not straight. I'm used to looking at it from this side better. I better eyeball it from this side. And I'm just getting the feet exactly where I want them. Get it straight up and down and that way I know where I want my sound post. The sound post isn't bad on this. Matter of fact, it's better than it was because the bridge has moved to where it should be now. But I'm still going to reach in there with a little tool and see if I can adjust it just a little bit. Move it just a little bit further behind the bridge. It's a, I'm going to say it's about right here right now, which isn't bad, too bad. But I'm going to move it about here, just a, just a hair further back. And the reason for that is it just lets, that gives just a teeny bit more flex in that top before that sound post is engaged. And that gives you just at least a little bit more um, woody sound, you know. The more you get that wood to vibrate, the better off you are. And especially on a more inexpensive fiddle, um, the better you can get that wood to vibrate, the better that little fiddle is going to sound. Sometimes these little fiddles can sound really good, and I think this is going to be one of them. Not the easiest thing to do here. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. If you've never done that, good luck. <laughs> it's, not, it's not absolutely easy to do. This tool makes it easy once you've already got the post standing up. But if you don't have the post standing up, there's a lot of different ways to do it. And maybe we'll go through that some other time on another video. But right now, uh, I think we're just about as good as we need to be. The sound post is sitting vertically right about here now, which is a lot better than where it was. I'm looking at everything else on the setup. I'm looking at the uh, tailpiece. The tailpiece is just about adjusted correctly. It's just, oh, I'd say an eighth of an inch that side of the... Uh, the, of the nut back here for the tailpiece. The tail pin is in solid. It's not leaning or anything. It looks like it's in good shape. The tuning keys themselves are inexpensive. I don't think they're real ebony, but they seem to work pretty well, so we're just going to let that go. Um, I think we're ready to put some new strings on this, so we'll start that right now. All looks pretty good. making sure I'm recording here. Yeah, I think I am. I thought, could be doing all this for nothing. Wouldn't that be terrible? I think we're doing okay. Like I said, this is my first rodeo or as far as filming instruments with the uh, camera. And so we'll see what happens. Okay, these strings, in case you're wondering, you know, I'm not saying they're the best string out there, but when you're talking about strings in terms of value, what you get for the money, these are one of the best, I really think. I really do believe it. They're uh, Diodario, they're Pro Art, and this one is the J56W4-4. 
And um, I believe in the catalog they even have another distinction. The distinction that I want to make is that the E-string is wrapped. It's not a solid E-string. It has a wrapping around the E-string, which gives it that much softer sound again. Everything you can do to soften the sound, in my book, or my opinion, is worth doing. So that's why I use these strings. These are a nylon core string. They're medium tension. And again, the number is J56W4-4. Hold that up there. Maybe you can see it a little bit better from up there. Those are, uh, for my money, that's the best string out there for uh, your average violinist, if you will. Uh, if you're into the uh, concert circuit, uh, perhaps you're going to do something different. But uh, for, our, for our money and for the average person, average working person out there, these are the strings to go with, in my opinion. And there are plenty of other good choices, but I'm talking about uh, for price, for money, you know, for price, for value, I guess you'd say, or what you get for the money. Uh, this is a, well, hard to beat. On these strings, these are not horrible strings. I mean, they're cheap, but, uh, but they don't sound horrible. So I'm going to save these strings for in case you would happen to break a string. That's another thing about violins. I always joke and say, when a violin is set up perfectly, it is ready to fall apart. Now, why, why do I say that? Well, it's true. Everything is held by tension. And these tension pegs are not the easiest to adjust, and some people will uh, adjust these and uh, break their strings. So, that's why I'm going to go ahead and save it. On other instruments, I don't generally save the strings, but on violins, uh, it's not a bad idea, especially when you're talking about a, a beginner violinist, beginner person. These, uh, the neg if these strings have a negative, is that they have so much wrapping around them down here that they're hard to get in these little adjuster slots. By the way, these tail pieces are the only way to go, in my opinion, especially for uh, beginners and kind of your medium level violin, violin players. I'm sure for the concert violinists, they're probably using something a little different. But, but for your average person, these are the way to go. You can adjust them. They've got the fine tuners built in. And uh, they're not expensive, and uh, you can, so what I'm doing here is I'm adjusting this all the way out. I'm going to get it close with the tuners up here, and that'll give her, the uh, customer, a lot more room to uh, fine-tune it down here. And won't have to mess with the big tuning keys up at the top. Now, I've got that fed through the hole. I wrap it around the far side of the peg one time, meaning away from the the handle of the peg. Go around the hole at least one time. Then I cross back over what I've just wrapped so that way it kind of locks it in. And I know I'm not showing that right now. Again, being my first rodeo, we're lucky to get what we're getting here. But uh, then I wrap it around and let the string work its way toward the peg as I'm tightening it up. Okay. So now put a little bit of tension on there just to hold it in place to keep the bridge where I want it. Now we're going to move to the opposite side. I work in the order of the pegs because uh, you know the further you get down there, they're on top. So I start right here and work my way down like this. So we'll take this. E string out of there. This is the one that I don't like at all. This e, on this set, this E string is just a solid string. It's not wrapped, and that causes them to play a lot more harsh sounding. But again, I'm saving it because if she would happen to break the new one, well, this at least gives her a backup. These strings are color-coded, by the way, so that when you put them on, you'll know that you're putting the right one in the right place. Um, and on the back of the package, it tells you the, um, the, the uh, red one is the, uh, is the G string. The uh, yellow is the D string, so that's what I'm looking for. No, I'm sorry, I'm looking for the E string. I got ahead of myself. So I'm looking for the green one which is the E string.